السلام علیکم لیٹ می میک اے کنفیشن آئی ہیو بین واچنگ اینڈ ہیئرنگ بیرسٹر اعتزاز احسن فار مور دین تھرٹی ایئرز اینڈ آئی ہیو بین پرسنلی انٹریکٹنگ وتھ ہیم فار آلموسٹ ٹوینٹی ایئرز یٹ آئی ایم انٹریگڈ بائی ہیم آئی ایم انٹریگڈ بیکاز ہی ڈز ناٹ نیٹلی فٹ آئیڈر ان ٹو دا رول آف اے لائر اور اے پالیٹیشین اور این اکیڈیمک آئی سی ہیم از این انٹیلیجنٹ بریلینٹ پاکستانی مائنڈ دا ڈیلز اینڈ گریپلس ود ہسٹری اینڈ چیلنجز آف پاکستان and i see today's session as part of a series of sittings and discussions with him about pakistan that is why as thank you so much for finding time for me you know, as i said you don't neatly fit into any box neither as a you know neither as a politician neither as a lawyer neither as a neither as an author academic though you have written a brilliant more than one brilliant academic book how do you define yourself Oh that's a tough one. <laughs> that's a tough one. I I am uh, very devoted to the legal profession and uh, as a profession uh, not as really uh, an income yielding uh, activity. It does yield me a lot of income, but I have uh, Uh, i opted for the to uh, remain in this profession at a time when i was a briefless lawyer and i had the option of joining the civil service of pakistan as the uh, premier candidate in united pakistan but i opted for to remain in the That law that still intrigues me i can understand that because i left civil services but i would like people to understand you topped the civil services of pakistan which was a huge pride you'd never joined I know why? why the question first that I think needs to be addressed is why did I take the examination and sit for it at all right uh I took the examination I came back uh, from England in 1967 after having done the bar and law from uh, and Cambridge, Cambridge. Cambridge. Yes. and uh, there, there was a dis- there was a disappointment uh Uh, in the next few months or year because i remained a marginal briefless lawyer and uh, uh, people would make uh, in fact small of uh, young barristers mm. so a senior lawyer would be sitting with, if i was introduced to him in the bar uh, somebody would say you lift a brick and there's a barrister you took the css exam you talked to the country and you decided the decision when you decided i will not join central superior services why i would not have jo- i would have been uh, i w- i don't have fit it in and by uh, by essentially i was we were uh, by this time we had in the university uh, punjab university where i was lecturing part time as a law hmm. uh, lecturer that job i had got uh, which got me 400 rupees a month it was a retainer and i had i was a part of a leftist uh, marxist group of professors and uh, so you were an academic at some sort well I, in the sense that i have uh, uh, I've read a lot of uh, many of your critics of Indus Saga have pointed out that Atazar's essence writing has a leftist marxist leaning in it. It is a marxist analysis in fact if I would the closest to a marxist analysis. Unfortunately Pakistan in Pakistan we don't mm. have a history. Mm. We don't just don't have a history. About Our history ourselves. starts at in 711 AD. Right. with mohammed bin qasim before that we don't we don't have a history will it be correct to looking at indus saga will it be correct to say that pakistan has been defined for pakistanis by the outsiders the british and indian historians of 20th century have defined what pakistan is pakistan unfortunately has not even been defined the the, the definition that we accept today are not those uh, given by uh, indian or uh, uh, 
colonial historians or post-colonial historians. But the Pakistan that we uh, define today is the Pakistan of all those who opposed Pakistan. And it is the uh, orthodoxy's view of Pakistan. When uh, uh, the history of Pakistan starts and all the analysis that is done on Pakistan and its history is through the uh, vision of uh, uh, the history of Islamic Pakistan. Hmm. Not of Pakistan, but of Islamic Pakistan. But Pakistan is, has, has been a plural, uh, multiracial, multi-ethnic, uh, and has had a history prior to uh, uh, Islam also. I mean, trust, uh, 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 thanks for mentioning this. In one of your plenary closing lectures in 2012, January 2012, at Columbia University, which is also my alma mater, you said that Pakistan is a state for Muslims and not was not created an Islamic state, but was a state for Muslim. What is the difference? An Islamic state, I'll give you the, the, the definition, an Islamic state, uh, is a state uh, where the state itself has a is, adopts a religion, like Saudi Arabia, like Soma uh, Somalia, like Iran, like the Taliban Afghanistan was. But a Muslim state is like a, uh, is a state where the overwhelming majority are Muslims, and uh, it's like France, it's like Britain. It's like uh, uh, Denmark. As much as they are Christian states, we are a Muslim state. And that is what Barrister Jinnah but, wanted but, to create. But, would Norway and Denmark would not describe themselves as Christian state, UK, France. And describe them, maybe Christians are majority, but they're not Christian states. They don't, because uh, the state does not adopt a religion. And the state does not decide on the basis of religion b between men and women. What would you respond to all those who take up and say Islamic Republic of Pakistan, like a law minister then in 2011, also challenge you on the floor of the parliament, says that Azaz has gone bonkers. Here is the constitution. This is Islamic Republic of Pakistan. Well, as I said to the law minister in the parliament, I am amazed that you remember that. Sher Afghan. Sher Afghan. I said to the speaker, I said, Mr. Speaker, what is in your name? What is, what is important is what is in the contents. It is a parliamentary democracy. Uh, Pakistan is a parliamentary democracy uh, and a federation, a federal parliamentary democracy. And I said, what, does, what is it in your name? The minister is called Sher Afghan, hmm. the killer of lions. Hmm. And I'm sure he'll run from this, uh, <laughs> his chair if he saw a mouse. Hmm. So it's the content. The content is based no, on... But there is an aspiration. The framers of 1951 constitution or whatever wanted to call it the objective resolution, the Islamic Republic of Pakistan. So there is an aspiration coming from within Pakistan that we have to be an Islamic state. All right, let us be an Islamic state. But Pakistan, we will be Islamic state as Pakistan. We will, we must have some individuality, some uh, identity. And uh, uh, what really uh, sort of uh, kept agitating me on uh, the issue, on this issue was the very fact, uh, what am I? You know, in the time... Uh, after the breakup of East Pakistan. Uh, why did East Pakistan break up? We were Muslim, they were Muslim. Hmm. Uh, why do, does Kuwait de deny me a visa or Saudi Arabia? I, I need to go to Mecca and Medina uh, uh, because of the permission of some human beings, of men, not of Allah Almighty. Hmm. But I need the visa stamp of the Saudi government. To do Hajj. To do Hajj. <coughs> Why? If we were just Muslims, and that would uh, suffice, 
uh, we, we would not need, I would not need a visa, you would not need a visa to go to Hajj. And so the existence of states is a reality, but you made a very interesting, provocative comment in New York and Columbia University. You said, it was in the context of Bangladesh, you said, Pakistan and Bangladesh were born as two twins tied at hips and at surgery to divide them ultimately had to be painful. What were you really saying? Uh, when I say that, in, uh, I develop that in, in the Indus saga. And uh, you see, uh, civilizations, in my uh, estimation, are uh, sired and sustained by huge geographical divides or divisions or features. Uh, Australia, New Zealand, and UK. China and India, the Himalayas. If that it has been, if it had been flat land, there would have been an imperceptible change over a uh, uh, region of thousands of miles distance of. But there is gradual change, not the distance. Sharp that, change, which not we the see. sharp change. Agreed. And now, mountains are one, oceans are a third, main impediment or vehicle, and the third is rivers. Hmm. Rivers sire and sustain civilizations and distinct civilizations. The Indus flowing from the north towards the west into the Persian Gulf or the Arabian Sea. Uh, will sire and sustain as essentially a different civilization from uh, uh, the Ganges and the Jamna and the uh, Ganga, Jamna and the Brahmaputra coming into a delta uh, uh, 1200 miles away hmm. in, uh, in Bengal. So there will be so, so you militating and rejecting two predominant definitions of Pakistan. One, the British Indian definition that this is a broken part of India. There was one India, what Nehru says in Discovery of India. And the second is General Zia and his followers' definition that it is part of the Islamic world, the Arab world, the Muhammad bin Qasim and all that. You said it is neither part of the Islamist world nor is part of the British India. Uh, that is an extreme position. I don't say we are not part of the Muslim world, but I say we are a distinct Muslim country. And uh, uh, the, the, uh, like I said, Kuwait and Jordan and uh, Turkey and Pakistan, that is something distinctly different um, between themselves. And I draw emphasis on the difference. I, I do not say uh, that what is Pakistani? What is a Pakistani? He is a Muslim. Is a complete answer. It can't be. They are Hindus and Christians also. Hmm. In fact, uh, when I went to a university in England, in my first Christmas, uh, which was uh, uh, December uh, vacation week, the Christmas week, a friend of mine invited me to his house to spend the Christmas weekend with the family. I went there and these were the Palmers. Uh, Bernard Palmer was my friend. He was in the next room in hostel, uh, in, in Downing College. And uh, we sat down for dinner and uh, Mrs. Palmer asked me the question straight away first. Uh, Son, where are you from? I said, from Pakistan. Now imagine 1965, there were people around the world, including uh, England, who had not heard of Pakistan. Seriously. And this is a very rich uh, family. This is Cambridge. C Cambridge. Uh, well, they lived in Bedford, right. in a huge house, mansion, etc. But uh, uh, she, 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 she said, where is Pakistan? So I said, auntie, it's... Uh, North, north of India. Northwest of India. Right. So she said, uh, uh, 
oh, oh, you are the one that broke away from India. Oh, precisely, this is what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, so there are two definitions. One, we yeah. are part of India uh -huh. that broke away because Muslims were communal, Jinnah wanted a fiefdom of his own. And the other is that we were always part of the Muslim Islamist world and we became, Pakistan became when Muhammad bin Qasim came in 7th yeah, Absolutely. You reject but both the, these definitions. No, no she says, uh, uh, oh, you are the ones. Uh, so she knew about Pakistan, but she couldn't have placed it. So you are the ones. You are the ones who, who broke away India. from India. I said, yes, auntie. We, uh, I thought that was a sufficient answer. She said, uh, why did you break away? I said, because we are not Indians. So auntie says to me, uh, you're not Indians. I said, no, 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 no. She said, then what are you? Uh, very casually. I said, uh, auntie, we are Muslims. She said, aren't the Arabs Muslim? I said, they are Muslims. So why, are you one state? I said, no, we are 20 states or some. Plus, by 22 minus, two Arab speaking states. Two, two, uh, 22 Arab speaking states. She said, so, so you can't be Arab. You can't call yourself a Pakistani because you're an Arab or an Arab because you're a Pakistani. So what are you? I said, uh, uh, we are, um, uh, we could, it could be a call, uh, we could be Persian and Arabs. She said, no, you can either be Persian or you can be Arab. Uh, you can all be Muslims. Uh, but you can't be an India. Yes. You can't be un India or un something. I want to know what you are. Yeah. At this, her husband. I'm sure the Indian, Indian viewers of this discussion will love to get the answer from you. <laughs> the, so how uh, do you really define yourself? I, 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 just a minute. Now, <laughs> the husband, Mr. Palmer, he, uh, he got uh, a little worried that she was. Kind of, I was being uh, uh, embarrassed and cornered a bit. About your origins. About my origins. Because right. she said, you, 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 all you've said is you're not India. Hmm. But you haven't said th that what you are. And you haven't defined yourself. Uh, you define yourself as an Arab. You're not. You're Muslim. Everybody is a Muslim. All, the, all those countries. So, uh, now, this, I didn't have an answer to that. Hmm. At that time. And it haunted me. Do you now have an answer? Now I have an answer because I am an Indus person. Then how would you explain this thing that six snatched away the Peshawar Valley from Durrani rulers of Afghanistan. British took away large parts, almost 50% of the present Balochistan from the Afghanistan rulers. Why Pakistan and Afghanistan is then not one nation and one country? Pakistan and Afghanistan are different countries because How? the gain of the, uh, the, gain of what? the the physical barrier, the mountains, uh, the Suleiman range is an amazing physical barrier. We have more Pashtuns in Pakistan than in Afghanistan. We have, so but they they, they wouldn't call themselves uh, uh, non-Pakistanis. They no. call themselves Pashtuns in Pakistan are, are, uh, uh, are as much Pakistanis as Pashtuns in Afghanistan are Afghanis. Uh, what matters, and they may be the same religion, they may be the same uh, uh, creed, descent, uh, language alone will not define. In a recent interview, General Tariq Khan, who is an Afghan Pathan, admitted to me that the term Pathan is a fairly recent legal invention in Pakistan. By the British time in 1950s, 60s, in the records, government records, Pathans were called Afghans, if you look at the old record. So we were... But Olive Karo, the governor, a very authentic... The ways of Pathan. Well, he, he used the term yes. Pathan for that. Yes, you have an answer. <laughs> you have an answer. The, my point is that there can be a number of sub-nationalities. Right. But Indus person combines the Sindhi, the uh, uh, Punjabi, the Pathan, and the Balochi, and the Kashmiri. And this is what I, uh, what I you know, uh, actually suggest to my Indian friends to recognize the fact that the, the Indus 
flowing in one direction has created over centuries a civilization where uh, uh, the Sindhi border is closer to Lahore because of the boats that brought in trade and uh, but then uh, the many areas of the Ganges. If this definition has to be accepted, where would you place six which could have joined Pakistan? Jinnah and Muslim League wanted them to join Pakistan, but Congress was able to prevail upon them for religious consideration. They were Punjabis, Punjabi speaking, same culture, same cuisine, everything. Two civilizations. There is the, 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 a place where the tectonic plates meet. And the Indus uh, and the Gangetic, I am not calling it Hindu, because there are Hindus in the, the uh, south of India who are completely different from the Hindus of the, uh, the north. And the difference is far larger than between the Hindus of uh, North India and the Muslims of North India. So I'm not calling it a Hindu uh, uh, hmm. region. Uh, I'm calling it the Gangetic region. But where do you place six? Because six were uh, no, no. Six are, uh, are, are, the, are the attempt to bring these two together. Islam and Hinduism. Hinduism. And Guru Nanak, you uh, recall, when, uh, and this is what is in the uh, uh, Sikh beliefs and uh, the, one of their, uh, um, I won't say legend, because it's a genuine belief. Uh, I can't call my Islamic uh, True. stories as legends. And, but when Guru Nanak died, uh, there was a contest between the Muslims and the Hindus. How to bury him? How, how to deal with his uh, remains. The Hindus wanted to burn him, hmm. set him on fire. The Muslims wanted to bury him. Hmm. And apparently this, this intense engagement was going on when some strange, uh, stranger, but old man uh, came along and some of some Sikhs believe that this was Guru Nanak himself who came along and he said, what's the argument about? They said, here's the our dead body and he's our venerated uh, uh, elder and he's died and we, uh, we, he, uh, we Hindus, we believe he was a Hindu and the Muslims believe he was a Muslim. So they want to bury him and we want to uh, set his pyre. So he said, at least remove the uh, cloths, hmm, the chadar, the chadar, and let me see. So they removed the chadar, and the, the, the instead of the dead body, there was flowers. Yes. So they were shocked, but half the flowers were buried, and half the flowers were burned. And there are two places in this uh, uh, Darbar Sahib Kartarpur. Uh, in, in, in where there is uh, there is a grave of uh, Guru Nanak and uh, the platform where his pyre was lit. But look at the problem. This def I agree that this I have known the legend. Given the it, given this passion and belief that Sikhism was the bridge between Hinduism and Islam, Sikhs moved more towards the Hindus over the course of time. If Sikhs had not decided to join Congress in 1947, Sikhs had Lahore greater, I mean, they had the wealth and the land and the businesses in Rawalpindi, large parts of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, Gujranwala, Gujar Khan, Lahore and other areas. And if Punjab would have been with us, Sikhs would have been a very powerful, well entrenched community in military, in business, corporate diplomacy and everything. But on religious affinity, they sided with India. Uh, actually, uh, this not, is not, not, not uh, religious affinity. How do you define? I mean, they are losers. I mean, they, if you look at it from that point of view, they would have been half the masters oh, of this. Oh, they would have been. They would certainly have been in a very strong position in a nation state, in an independent nation state, had they joined us. But. Uh, 
Master Tara Singh waving the sword on the steps of the Punjab Assembly and uh, deciding Jo Mange Ka Pakistan Usko Denge Kabristan. Kabristan. Uh, is a mistake, uh, uh, perhaps. Uh, no, you can call it blunder, but the point is there has been an affinity between Hindus and Sikhs. So the whole romanticized Sega of of Sikhism being a bridge between Hindus and Islam falters on that. The Sikhs are a very uh, uh, adaptive people. I have been with, uh, walking in Delhi, looking around, going around Hamayu's tomb, hmm. because the former Chief Election Commissioner of India, Manohar Singh Gill, who people are familiar with him, Manohar Singh Gill wanted to show me, uh, he was in charge of, uh, put in charge by the government of rest restoring the monument, uh, Humayu, uh, the monument and mausoleum of uh, Humayu, the uh, emperor, Mughal emperor. And we were going around and uh, I said to him, I said, I, you will, uh, by the way, Manohar, remember, you, you will have to drop me at that a certain point. Uh, so he said, oh, very good. Fair up and down, ke matha bhi take lang in Nizamuddin Aliyah. Agreed. And we went to Nizamuddin Aliyah, uh, uh, grave and tomb. The rush of people towards Manohar. Hmm. He was a tall man, so he had his blue turban. Was, they rushed towards him. He is a devoted uh, sort of follower and devotee of Khaja Nazamuddin. He is a devoted, uh, he is a devotee of uh, Khaja Muinuddin Chishti. And every Sikh friend that I know of uh, wants to go and uh, pray at these uh, uh, Muslim tombs. And um, it, 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 to them, it is not uh, so much, uh, uh, they don't feel too different from uh, Pakistan. So six, Muslim. six represent a special case. Do you then as a historian feel that India and Pakistan will become at some point friendly states that can work in a cooperative framework in South Asia? Uh, first, uh, uh, Dr. Sahib, I may say, I'm, uh, when you say I'm a historian... You know, I said you don't neatly define anything. <laughs> I, I, can, I define myself as an anti-historian. <laughs> because the history that is being taught to my children, I am anti that history. Agreed. I, I am anti cutting us off. You know, the, the, uh, in Ziaulak's time, a book was actually compiled on the history of Pakistan, where the first chapter, uh, it's somewhere in the files also, the first chapter on the history of Pakistan was Venjadaro and Harappa. Fine. Because you can't avoid them, you even have your, them on your bank notes. The second chapter hmm. of history of Pakistan was... Uh, uh, Saudi Arabia before Islam. The third chapter was uh, the message of Islam and Makkah. Hmm. The fourth chapter was the resistance to the message of Islam in Makkah. The fifth chapter was migration to Medina. The sixth chapter was the Medanite uh, state of which the Prime Minister makes much mention. The stem of Riyasat e Medina. The seventh chapter was the conquest of Makkah, and about by the thirteenth or fourteenth chapter, Islam had gone with the Umayyads to Damascus. Hmm. And the fifteenth chapter brought back, came back to Pakistan with Muhammad bin Qasim. And in 711, the history of Pakistan starts. Agreed. The Guptas, the, the uh, Ashokas, the uh, Chandra uh, Gupta Maurya. Chandra Gupta Maurya, the, 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 the golden age of the Guptas. Right? Hmm. Uh, the uh, Kushana, the Huns, the Sistanis, Scythians, uh, the Bakhtarans, Bactrians, everybody is 
Wiped out. But wiped out. As if we didn't have mothers and fathers and parents and relatives. Even and in the modern contemporary history, I think Marathas are a very important force to be dealt with in history in the 17th, 18th, 19th centuries. I mean, they've been totally missing from power. But, but uh, Sahib, this is also the problem on the Indian side. I brought some books of Indian history. I'm fascinated by Indian history. Beautifully written book uh, for my children. And afterwards, when I discussed with my daughter, she had no idea of Sultanat of Delhi. And I said, what are you talking? I'm of Chandra Gupta Maurya and then Mughals. And she brought the book. And the book had absolutely no mention of Mahmud mm -hmm. Ghaznavi or and, and the, I mean, like, the, like from the 9th and 10th century till the Mughal period of 16th century, the book only had three pages. Actually, with the rise of the BJP, hmm. and although uh, Vajpayee himself resisted this movement, but there was that uh, lady uh, minister, very important, he, he uh, was... Uh, a very nationalist naam uska zain se nikal raha but uh, anyway uh, there was this uh, attempt to uh, hinduize the curriculums hmm. and uh, uh, it, it, it really started at that time Hmm. Under Modi, hmm. of course, they have crossed all limits. Hmm. Their uh, it's uh, uh, Hindutva now. So where do you place the modern India then? If you rejected the Islamic Republic of Pakistan, you say it's a state for Muslims, not Islamic Republic. Now where is India stands now? State with Muslims in the majority, but state for all the Hindus and all the Sikhs and all the uh, Pakistanis. Is a straight for all these people. For all, the, all these people. But where yeah. the modern India, which started as a pure secularism, Nehru and everything, and what about it now? India is in a very, very uh, sad situation. And uh, by sad, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, technically we should be happy if India is uh, in trouble. But it's the kind of situation that India is it's not going to disturb uh, itself and be the lesser and reduce itself. It is going to cause a lot of tension, friction uh, and unnecessary <coughs> agitation in an entire region. I think three people, I used to say, uh, like a Marxist would, <coughs> that uh, the individual doesn't matter in history. Individual doesn't make history. History makes the individual Agreed. and produces the event. But I, I'm, I'm going back virtually on that um, long held theory, <laughs> belief in me. I think three men contemporaneously, our contemporaries, have changed this world forever. Like who? And for the worst. Donald Trump. Benjamin Netanyahu and Narendra Modi. These three men, their impact <coughs> on history and the... the uh, I don't see how Benjamin Netanyahu fits into your definition. Well, better Benjamin uh, Netanyahu, all three, to I my mind... I understand Trump and Modi. Uh, all three, to my mind, are genocidal. They would wipe out populations. Trump with his uh, white supremacy and supremacists, that is why the movement in reaction is Black Lives Matter. Modi with his Hindutva would finish with wipe out every, would put every Muslim in jail. He's put 99 million Kashmiris in jail, in an open jail. And uh, Netanyahu is the biggest genocidal of them. Look what he does in uh, Gaza. Ga they call it a war, Israel-Palestine war. How, what is, is this a war? No. You lock up a million people. You, they have 
maybe some catapults and uh, they launch some missiles or something, and you drop bombs on them with the most sophisticated uh, air artillery on uh, ever known to man, and maybe not be known for uh, with that air artillery, their jets, their missiles, they keep bombing them and they call it a war. Hmm. It's not a war, it's genocide. Hmm. And Netanyahu is uh, these three men, their impact on history and the uh, well being of mankind. Hmm. So the answer is clear. You don't see India and Pakistan becoming friendly states in the near future. This no, no, I think, the, I, I, I think they will. They will. I think there's no other way to survive but to wipe out. The, this uh, mentality. mentality. And at that time, when I was uh, a, a put in jail by Ziaulak, and actually that is where I... Uh, Dr. Prison is a, uh, is a kind of... A, uh, for somebody who can uh, take it, a kind of... A, uh, like they say, you do meditate and you uh, detoxify. It kind of allows you to detox. And you start, th you, you, if you start thinking and concentrating on questions in life that you have not been able to answer, your Indian critics believe that during the prison time you were confronted by Nehru's discovery of India, letters to India. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And there you wanted to come up with your answer to that. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Indeed. Indeed. Nehru, Jawaharlal Nehru is probably, uh, to my, in my estimation, the foremost Indian uh, uh, Indian Indian. I don't mean India in a larger sense because we have other people to compete with him. Uh, but he stands head and shoulders. Oh, he is amazing. And Nehruvian India was uh, truly an India that uh, could probably have led the world. But uh, Nehru had a dream also a vision, a dream, a passion, and his passion was United India. No doubt that Pandit Nehru stands head and shoulder above the Indians of our age, of the past hundred years. But his romanticized vision of one India is principally the problem which creates the conflict between the states of India and Pakistan. It is, it is in the sense that uh, uh, it, it, if misused, the Nehruvian, Nehruvian concept actually uh, uh, submerges and smothers other minorities and nationalities. Although that was never, and I don't know, I won't believe that would ever to have been uh, the uh, purpose of uh, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, because he was a very enlightened man. Uh, if you read his writings, it's so substantive. His mere his letters to uh, Indra, Indra uh, uh, is a big volume, is a huge volume, and uh, his discovery of India is a, is a vision that uh, uh, that comes out very softly. He, if he has an image of united India, it's a united India with Muslims and with Hindus and with Christians and Parsis. It's not a united India with the Hindu-dominated united India, like the Modi concept of Mahabharat. He doesn't derive it from Mahabharat. But what's the difference? You know, when you say that Modi, if it continues in the previous discussion, can create a lot of problems for the neighborhood, not only for India. The BJP and the RSS have, in a very ironical fashion, inherited the same vision of one India. They also think 
that Pakistan is the flawed state it should not have been created. And the Congress did the mistake. They have a charge sheet against Congress that Congress should not have accepted the division of the Mother India. The uh, difference is in uh, uh, one of uh, enlightenment. The enlightened mind seeing one Pakistan or seeing one India would uh, and is a soft mind. Uh, but the uh, RSS mind is a is a harsh, militant, uh, and oppressive mind. And uh, there's a huge difference between uh, uh, saying India is one country and we are one civilization and it has many colors. Uh, Minero used the uh, very uh, appropriate name for his concept of palimpsest, where uh, the, a, a, a painting uh, is uh, put in layers, transparent layers. So if the first layer is just the uh, landscape, you put a second transparent, uh, translucent sheet on it with other features and the homes uh, are, can be seen. The third layer and roads and uh, human beings can be seen. Uh, like they have uh, in uh, uh, biology uh, books where the uh, body parts uh, keep increasing as you pour. So he used the word palimpsest for the Indian civilization. And that every uh, layer had a value and was integral. But Azhazah, you being a constitutional lawyer, like Jinnah himself, who was a constitutional lawyer, if you look at Aisha Jalal's book, um, The Soul the Spokesman. Spokesman, it looks as if Jinnah's mind frame was towards a loose federation out of the British India, in which your, your Indus Pakistan could have easily fitted in with New Delhi being in the center of a broad, loose federation or confederation. It is Nehru's vision of a central India that actually militated against that concept. More than Nehru, Vala by Patel's. Okay. When this vision of a central India or a unitary India was being uh, put in practice, or, or actually, after it had been divided virtually, and the decision was taken to divide it, uh, Vallabhai Patel then came out with his uh, axe and his hammer and uh, bringing in all the 600, uh, 600 princely states into India out of 605 uh, by getting their. Uh, um, the, the ruler's consent and uh, decision to join India. Nehru, I still tend to admire and give the benefit of doubt to. Uh, but not uh, Vallabhai Patel. And the militants, the real uh, uh, people who thought that uh, this was going but to But Vallabhai Patel has subsequently been adopted by RSS and BJP. They have built a huge statue of Vallabhai Patel in Gujarat or somewhere. Vallabhai Patel is their inspiration. Is, is their inspiration. And Not that's Nehru. A, that's, They're against Nehru. Oh, that's, that's, uh, that is a uh, soul wound that India is going to have to suffer for a long time. You think India will be over this? India is uh, has an enlightened uh, ruling class, a well-read ruling class. You know the number of uh, uh, books uh, sold per capita uh, compared to us, and then the number of books written per capita, 
and the number of PhDs and the diversity of the PhDs in India uh, compared to us, we in, in, in uh, the premier Punjab University, most of the PhDs you are giving are on Islam, Islamiyat or Iqbaliyat. Hmm. And uh, while their, uh, their PhDs are on nuclear uh, uh, microbiology or something like that. Almost everything. Almost everything. Uh, I think they will, they have a course correcting uh, mechanism in that, less than with us. So we are told from our inter interlocutors that Narendra Modi is extremely popular and will probably win the next election in a landslide. The arithmetic enables him to do that. The arithmetic is that 80% of the population is Hindu. Now, there is a, uh, a certain form of uh, uh, a complexity, I don't call it a complex, but there's some complexity in uh, their uh, thought and it would be in ours too. If we were a majority, if Muslims were a majority and had been ruled for a thousand years by, an, by a minority, hmm. Now, this is 700 to 700 years of... Almost oh, 700 years. ...of Muslims and then the uh, British. Hmm. Under the British also, we were all a majority, an overwhelming majority. But some 300,000 uh, Goras, uh, including tailors and uh, boot makers, they uh, ruled us. Now, for them... To be, uh, uh, to find an option of uh, a prime minister who prostrates himself on the floor before a statue of Ram. Hmm. Ooh, this must be a moving uh, kind of a moment for uh, a Hindu, any Hindu. And suddenly he would be feeling, I am free. This is, uh, but there is a great tragedy in this. Because I think that Hindu was far freer. When he was, uh, he was the ruling government in India. Hmm. But he did not have this RSS oblique Modi ideology. And Modi will... Your comment makes me think that the rise of RSS and BGP with the feeling of being Hindus as victims in their own large land, first by Muslims and then by British, that it has some very genuine, bona fide roots inside the population. So if it is so, then why would it go away? No, it, uh, I think Modi is going to win the elections. It's the arithmetic, straight arithmetic. 80% are Hindu. But you also said... And if he gets a majority in the 80%, he's uh, past the post. But you also said that India has such a large, broad-based, educated intelligentsia that it will be able to overcome itself from the RSS moment. Oh, in this... In the, uh, it, it, it certainly will. I have... Uh, uh, I am I, clear. I am clear in that. But that may take ten years, 20, fifteen years. But these, uh, the RSS uh, Modi years are going to be tragic for India. Tragic. Thank you.